In this video, we're going to look at the basics of creating an analog style synth based sound. We're using Novation's Base Station 2, but you can follow along with any analog or virtual analog synth. We're not going to walk through a specific bass sound, instead, we're going to talk you through the basic concepts and techniques you need to build bass patches from scratch. Always try and approach bass design with a plan in mind. First off, decide what type of sound you want to create. Does it need to be punchy, resonant, fat, thin? Once you've established this, you can start to think about your sound, how many oscillators you'll need and what type of waveforms. Common analog waveforms each have their own distinct tonalities. A sine wave is the purest form of synth waveform. It contains only the fundamental frequencies with no overtones. As a result, it sounds clean and smooth. A triangle wave is soft and contains odd harmonics from the fundamental frequency. A sawtooth wave is the basis for many bright and cutting bass sounds. It contains both odd and even harmonics. Like a triangle wave, a square wave contains only odd harmonics, giving it a more hollow sound. However, its flat edges and corners impart its character, with a more solid tone and some brightness. A pulse wave is essentially an uneven square wave. A pulse wave's character is a biting yet quite nasal sound suitable for thinner types of bass and lead. It contains both odd and even harmonics. Evolving bass sounds can be made by varying the width. This is commonly done using an envelope or LFO. Often you'll find you only need one or two oscillators to make a sound. So start off with a single oscillator and try and get the sound you're after. Then add more as you need. This is effectively a basic form of additive synthesis. To a large extent, the success of any single oscillator bass sound depends on the power and richness of the oscillators of the synth. Every synth has its own character, but try using one with powerful oscillators, a characterful filter and snappy envelopes. Something like the MS-20, Novation Bass Station 2, or plugins like Arturia Pigment and Killer Hearts Phase Plants are great for this. It's easy to overlook the levels of your oscillators and just set them all to full when making multi-oscillator bass sounds but this can soon hit upon undesirable results. The frequencies and waves of each oscillator interact differently depending on how their levels are set and how hard they're driving your synth mixer stage. Many synths, particularly analog ones, allow you to overdrive the mixer stage for added harmonic richness and growl. Though this may be what you're after, it's also not good for clean sounding bass, so try and keep your levels in check. Many synths also offer sub oscillators. This will give you an extra oscillator pitched either one or two octaves below your main oscillator, usually using some kind of simple waveform such as a sine. This is great for adding a bit of extra bass presence. When setting the pitch of your oscillators, generally start off with them both at the same octave and work from there. Now let's set one an octave above. We'll try moving up an octave with this second oscillator and see how it sounds each time. It often helps to have an oscillator set higher in the mix, as this will help your bass cut through on smaller speakers. Bear in mind though that if the space between the two pitches of the oscillators is too far apart, then you might find it hard to get a sound that gels later when you've got such a big frequency gap. Sometimes this can be a useful effect, but often, the closer together the pitch is, the more solid your sound. Using subtle amounts of detune, kept to just a few cents, we'll add a little bit of chorus and movement and thickness. Almost all analog style bass patches will make use of a low pass filter. One which filters out some of the top higher frequencies but leaves the lower ranges intact. Filters come with different slopes, often labeled 12, 18 or 24 dB. You might also see this written as two, three or four pole, which mean the same thing. These will apply different degrees of filtering, resulting in darker or lighter bass sounds, with four pole or 24 dB filters being the more extreme. The design of the filter itself can play a major role in the character of your bass too. 
A Moog ladder filter, for example, is renowned for its smooth but deep tones, while Korg's MS-20 is more aggressive, with self-oscillating resonance that can act as an oscillator in itself. The way the resonant filter on Roland's TB303 interacts with its accents and envelopes is what created the sound of Acid House and Techno. Resonance will create a peak around the cutoff frequency. At lower levels, this can help accentuate your bass sound and add a little punch. Cranked up and modulated, this is what creates the bubbling tones of acid bass lines. Modulating a filter can be what brings a bass line to life. A short, sharp envelope will allow for a mid-range punch while keeping the body of your bass low and subby. Many synth filters also include some kind of drive or distortion. Cranking your synth patch to the filter stage can be a great way to add extra harmonics, which might add, help add much needed presence, particularly if you're working with just triangle or sine waves. Envelopes are how we shape synth patches. An envelope generator is broken down into different stages. The attack controls the start of your sound and how quickly it engages. Short attack will give you a more punchy sound and a longer attack a softer one. The decay then controls how quickly our envelope drops to the sustain level. If we hold down a note with zero sustain, you can hear how decreasing the decay controls the amount of time before that note fades out. If we raise the sustain, you'll hear that the note will continue at that level. For the entire time that we have the note held down. Release then controls how quickly the level drops after we release the key. An amp envelope shapes the overall volume of the sound, but we can use a modulation envelope sent to a filter to control the cutoff frequency too. By having a short and quick modulation envelope routed to the filter, we can create a bit of mid or high range punch to a bass, which then rolls off leaving just the subbier, bassier sounds. Let's get a little synth bass sequence going and we can see how all of these things come together and shape a bass sound in real time. This sound here is just using a single sine wave oscillator. If we switch over to oscillator 2, we can add a square or saw wave. Switching to the acid filter gives us a slightly different character, particularly with the resonance cranked up. Adding distortion and overdrive in the filter stage will give us a bit more grit and help our bass line punch through. Oh, <laughs> 
there to shape the sound even more. just using a few simple elements of an analog synth, there's a whole range of bass sounds that we can create. 